Cabin over engine trucks, or COEs for short, went out of style around the same time as bell-bottom jeans. However, there was once a day when the American roads were heavily populated with these flat-faced trucks. In the 1970s, every major manufacturer produced them, though the most popular models came out of Freightliner, Mack, and GMC. Nowadays, we don't see many of these trucks on roads in North America, and when you do, they are usually special purpose trucks, like fire engines or dump trucks. But why did this style of truck all of a sudden disappear? Well, over the course of this video, we're going to go over seven of the main reasons as to why these are so rare today. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the world of trucking, don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it. Hold on, hold on, one second. Do you have a product, device, app, or technology that can help our North American truck drivers? Well, if you do, you can be a sponsor in one of our next videos. With over 90,000 truck drivers a part of our channel and over half a million views monthly, I'd like to bring your product to life. Email us at sponsorship at ettransport.ca. And now, back to that video. COE trucks first emerged as the main choice on the East Coast, even before World War II when regulations were introduced which restricted the length of the truck with a trailer. Manufacturers had to come up with a solution for the limited cubic inches available for cargo capacity, and shortening the cab was the most common proposal to solve this issue. As I'm sure you can imagine, this cut down on driver comfort quite considerably as truck cabins became smaller in an effort to maximize the space for cargo. 1982 was a pivotal year for this design as new regulations were introduced which no longer required the cab to be included in length restrictions and instead limiting the trailer itself to 53 feet. After these massive changes in regulations, truck manufacturers rushed to make the cabs more comfortable and engines more powerful for a more appealing package. This marked a change in tides for the new age of American trucking. However, COE trucks are still used in countries that have strict regulations. But unlike a lot of things where there is a crowd of people who don't want to move on and will talk about how the manufacturing of yesterday is better than today, a statement that does ring true in some cases, the truck driver's eagerness to get into more comfortable cabs than the COE design allowed for made this type of of cabs slide into retirement all that much faster. So what were the main seven reasons that nobody fought to keep these trucks on the road for? First and foremost, the limited sleeping nook size and the lack of driver comfort. This was an issue because of the small cabin, the driver was extremely close to the windshield, the sleeper bunk was very cramped, and the driver's personal cargo space nearly non-existent compared to today's models. The lack of comfort truly became a problem in the 60s and 70s with the development of the national highway system. It was during these two decades that trucks started to cover extreme distance in short amounts of time. A lot of people may think it sounds like nitpicking, but because truck drivers do incredible mileage per year and are often on the road for days at a time, having a comfortable cabin is one of the most important features of any modern semi. After all, for a lot of drivers, it's not an over-exaggeration to say that their truck is like a second home. With that, the necessity for cabin comfort became even more important than ever. To put it in comparison, some modern trucks are designed to even accommodate two sleepers and depending on the version, quite often have accessories like a microwave, TV, fridge, and more. All of which would be next to impossible to fit into the cab of a COE and still have room to move about. Secondly, which does kind of piggyback on the comfort issue, was noise. Seeing as the engine was more or less located directly under the driver, manufacturers were handcuffed when it came to ways that they could isolate the cabin from the noise of massive petrol or diesel engines. Most people get ticked off at a truck going past them loudly, but imagine how excruciating it would be to be driving thousands of miles with all of the engine sounds, rattles, and vibrations constantly bombarding you from under the driver's seat. That being said, modern COE trucks have evolved over time and now, thanks to improved technology, actually do have rather decently equipped cabins that are better isolated from the engine and the road. However, no amount of technology can reduce the noise as much as just simply not having the driver on top of the engine. Another issue with COE trucks was the hassle associated with maintenance and repair of the engine. Modern trucks have their engines in a separate engine compartment at the front of the truck in order to give mechanics easy access to the engine and all crucial systems. Unfortunately, COE trucks on the other hand would require tilting the entire cabin in order to reach the engine. So if a driver wanted to access the engine, even if it was just for a random check, they'd have to fasten and secure all loose items in the cab, which obviously above being a nuisance was also extremely time consuming. All in all, having a conventional truck build gives drivers better access to the cabin, engine, and engine system, while also providing a lot more room between the axles for storing necessities. Conventional trucks have prioritized things like higher capacity fuel tanks, hydraulic tanks, and utility boxes for chains and binders. Now, on to one of the more important issues, safety. Back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, both trucks and cars alike did not have the same advanced safety systems as today. No sensors, radars, 3D scanning cameras, ABS, stability programs, and node hill descent control or anything even remotely resembling it. 
There was actually a running gag among many COE drivers who would say something along the lines of, who is the first person at the scene of an accident? The driver. In a traditional COE truck design, the driver was basically two feet behind the windshield. Any head-on collision behind the wheel of a COE nearly always proved fatal, as there was no engine block to protect the driver and really nothing at all to absorb the impact. The fifth issue was one more specific to manufacturers. Designing and manufacturing conventional trucks is less complicated compared to the production of a COE truck, mainly because just like the driver has a lack of space to work with, the engineers also have a lack of space while designing a COE truck. Having less space available to them, engineers would typically have not just to anticipate, but also work through more issues before even being able to start production. The more engineering challenges, the more a company has to invest in order to develop a truck, and that's often before they can even see the truck hit the assembly line. Seeing as the more modern truck designs aren't as cramped, engineers typically have fewer roadblocks while finding a home for all the mechanical necessities. The sixth issue, and one that is important to not just manufacturers' design ease or driver's comfort, but rather to the ability to raise the bottom line of the driver, is the increased hauling capacity that is available when driving a more conventional truck style. Seeing as there's more space to work with than conventionals, this also allows for the installation of more powerful engines, which usually means that the rig is able to handle even bigger loads. Even though today's regulations still limit the length of the trailer, they do not regulate the length of the entire mobile unit. This means that one truck can haul multiple trailers. Although, there is another crucial factor that comes into play here. Physics. Conventional trucks have a longer wheelbase, and while this affects maneuverability and their turning radius to a great degree, it also provides the ability to engineer a truck that can safely haul bigger loads. Seeing as there is a longer wheelbase in conventionals, the truck is more stable on the highway and can distribute the weight of cargo more effectively. Which brings us into the last issue that I'll touch on, which plagued the COE design. Short wheelbases simply aren't ideal for high-speed highway runs. While COEs are better in tight places such as city driving, due to their increased maneuverability, they just don't come anywhere close to the performance that a conventional truck can offer on a highway, which is where the majority of drivers spend their time. Stability is a key factor when it comes to highway driving, especially when under heavy loads. However, even apart from highway stability, a long wheelbase conventional truck is also better suited for rough terrain. Despite a small few arguing that COE trucks do offer superior visibility, which probably is true, stacked up against the rest of the pros and cons, it doesn't seem like enough to convince drivers or fleet owners to invest in them. Despite the COE truck's exodus from North America, there is still a few markets that they are popular in. Europe, for instance, still widely uses COEs, the reason being that regulations still require a maximum length of the entire unit, meaning the extended front offered by a conventional would force carriers to use smaller trailers. Seeing as trucks can't pull multiple trailers in Europe thanks to these restrictions, it also means there isn't a need for trucks that can haul extremely heavy loads. That being said, some American truck manufacturers, such as Kenworth, still make COEs with their K200 model. Oddly though, despite these trucks largely being manufactured in America, they aren't for sale on the American market. Well, that's all for me, folks. We'd love to hear what you think. Do you miss either driving or having access to COE trucks? Is the increased visibility and turning radius enough to deal with the lacking safety and comfort? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to keep up with new content, and we'll catch you next time.